Jim, I remember speaking with you at this event a year ago, and you talked about how important it was for your program to get off to a good start. So how were you able to do it, and how do you do it again in 2024? Yeah, you know, our players set it all up over the summer. Uh, they, you know, they're training all summer. They don't let us coaches in there. Uh, so the, our captains really prepare our team over the summer well, get ready for it. And, and honestly, we start in the spring building the core of what we do. And uh, you, get, you hit the road uh, really quick and fast and, uh, and get after it. You've been a head coach, not just at Iowa, but in this sport for a long time. Yeah. What's it been like, the journey for you to watch when you were a young or a first-year head coach to now in watching what this sport has become and the popularity that it has garnered, especially over the last three to five years? Yeah, it's what you dream about, uh, you know, to play in the best league and try to become the best and be around such great people. This is why I think coaches coach and, uh, and players come play in this league. It's just a, an honor. You know, we're so grateful for every opportunity, and every game is just an, a, a blast. It's just the intensity. You can't buy those kind of things. And it's still the sport, and uh, it's a pure sport, with great teamwork, and, and that's what I love about it is what you do in the practice gym shows up on game day, and, and I love that part. Uh, guys like me can talk about the change. You've lived the change for a majority of your life. So going through all of that change, how do you keep it from being overwhelming and conversely actually maybe try to embrace it and enjoy it? Yeah, ultimately you just control what you do control and you don't spend a lot of energy on things you don't. Uh, you know, we talk to our players about just bringing their best every day, just their best focus, their best attitude and best effort. And if you, you bring that, then wins will come, but you don't focus on those things we don't control. And you simplify things that way. That way you can enjoy the process and, and you use those challenges that you see the good in those challenges. You don't look at them as fearful. That's not going to help you. It's looking at that everything is an opportunity. And um, if you have the right perspective, you're going to have a shot to play on game day at your best. Well, you certainly can't look at the schedule that Big Ten teams have now and be afraid of anything because you'd be afraid of every night that you go out there. <laughs> right. Yeah, I only look at the next one. I don't look at that whole schedule. I just look at that next one. I know, you know, we play Liberty on the first game and, uh, you know, game by game. But it's such a, uh, exciting to me. It's an opportunity. And, uh, you know, looking at this league and how it's expanded, uh, can't wait to, to see how it plays out over this season. How do you think it will play out? Obviously, there's maybe a little bit more travel here and there, and there are four programs that come in with incredible national championship yeah. pedigrees and recent success, certainly in the case of Oregon. But how much does it affect what you and your program do on a day-to-day -day basis? Well, it's exciting what the West Coast School is going to bring to the whole, whole league, but we're in the center of the league, so we take that and look at it as an advantage. We, we travel maybe the, the least, um, and so we're, we're happy to be in the center representing Iowa. Um, but I think it's just going to be a whole new journey uh, of adding these teams and seeing our conference was already just incredible. And, and now where does it go? It's uh, exciting. I think there's going to be a lot of eyes on our, our conference. And again, just more opportunity. What do you want the culture of your program to be? And who are the players that kind of help you drive that culture? Well, I brought two of them with me on this trip here, Anna and Michelle Urquhart, uh, Anna Davis. Um, you know, we, we talk all the, all the time about treating each other extremely well. If we don't get that part right, the, the wins aren't going to come. And so also, how do we train? How do we, you know, attack every day and enjoy that process? I tell my players, I want practice to be the favorite part of their day. It's not going to be easy. It's going to be hard, but I want it to be your favorite part. And day by day, you stack those practices on each other, and you're able to build something special, and it all starts with the players. Stylistically, what would you like Iowa volleyball to look like when it's playing its best? Yeah, you know, joy is a description, descriptive word, but ultimately very dynamic offense that, uh, you know, we can bring to the table. we got a very dynamic setters on our team uh, that can really change uh, the game. And so uh, we're a fast-paced offense, but we also switch it up. We run the middle more than almost any team in the country. Uh, so we kind of do a little bit of the opposite of what other teams do. Uh, and I think that makes teams have to prepare for us differently. But it all comes down to the players, them just executing and, and uh, enjoying those big moments and not being afraid of them. And perhaps part of that strategy is what you have in Anna Davis, one of the players that's with you yeah. here today. What does she provide for you and your program both on and off the court? Uh, everything. Uh, tremendous leader, just a brilliant student. Um, we call her the AKA CEO. She's going to run something. She is an incredible young lady and, uh, and has helped build that culture. We talk often about our house. You know, you don't see the restoration we've been building inside the house. 
And those things that we've done inside, I think, are going to really come out this, this season. And because of Michelle and Anna, they've been the parts to, show, to lead the way to show you how, how to work hard and how to treat each other right. And I love what, what's been restored inside our, our home at Iowa. And I uh, can't wait to get on the floor. So then you would describe yourself maybe as the architect and Anna as the construction manager, the product project manager in charge of that construction? She, she's got a hard hat on for sure. She's the hardest working girl in the, in the gym for sure. And, uh, and you know, just all our upperclassmen are so bought in and dedicated. And, and, and that's what you got to get right is that dedication to be the best and be your best. Um, and so we've, we've got the right character in the gym and, uh, and the work ethic and uh, looking forward to watching them on game day. We did just get to see some of her highlights. Uh, what's the best way to describe Anna's skill set on the court? Uh, you know, as a middle, she's, you, doesn't, you look at her height, she's only 6'1", six, 6'2", six, but she's the fastest player in the gym, and she can run all night. So she's going to run a slide, you know, as quick as you can run it, and you better have your, your run shoes on to keep up with her. Uh, she's always going to be a point ahead. She's never, you know, going to be mentally slow. She's going to be a sharp, and, and she's a great leader, and she's going to bring every player with her. And... Uh, yeah, she's, she's fun to watch. Uh, Michelle Urquhart is the other player that rep represents your program here yeah. today. Really well-rounded player yeah. who is among the top returnees in terms of service ace percentage. Yeah. Uh, what makes her such an important piece for your team? Just great IQ, loves to study film, bugs us in the office all the time. She could be a great coach, uh, just loves the game. It comes natural to her as well. It's, uh, so those two things combined, just a student of the game and it come natural. It's just it's, it's fun to watch her play and compete. She switches into a different personality when the ball and the whistle goes. She's a pretty intense kid, and she's fun to watch. Yeah, your players are listening, and I, and I hear some nods, see some nods over there as they hear the way that you're describing them as well. Uh, we just saw Michelle's highlights as well, so I'll ask it kind of a similar question. When she's playing her best, yeah. what kind of volleyball is she playing? Well, she'll serve you off the court uh, and, and make you feel the pain of a tough serve, and, and she – can pass now, uh, she'll tool the block all day, and, uh, and she's never going to give up, so it's fun to watch. Uh, these players, others, examples of transfers that have obviously had impact at more than one places. How have you seen the portal affect not just your program, but college volleyball as a whole? Yeah, we, we have five transfers. Four came in the spring, so it's, it's made a big impact. And for us, you know, able to turn our roster, you know, and get our roster really strong pretty quickly, and we had them all spring. Uh, so it's, it's, it's what the game is now, and uh, I, I lo love our transfers who've come in and, and bought in and proud to be a, an Iowa Hawkeye. Uh, we touched on your schedule just a bit, but not a bad place to start. I believe you open in Puerto Rico just to get mm -hmm. a little bit of that last summer sun right. before you really dialed in. Then you're here. back in Coralville for your own tourney, followed by the annual Cyhawk Series. How much emphasis goes into that stretch when you return home and you have that Iowa State match, which I know no matter what sport it is, if you're a Hawkeye, is remarkably important. It is big. They talk about your biggest rivalry, and we, we go to that match before we even go to the Big Ten matches. Yes. Uh, it's packed every night. So, And we go to their place this year and really want to get after them. We've had five setters the um, last couple of matches we played them. So looking forward to that. But, yeah, the whole non-con is building this team and our identity and looking forward to getting to Puerto Rico and enjoying that sun, um, you know, before the Iowa winter. But it's – uh, you know, looking forward to the competition and the growth that will happen through Nine Con. And obviously every coach is looking forward to playing matches in their home arena. Yeah. You have one of the newest, coolest kind of arenas mm -hmm. around. Mm -hmm. uh, what's it like on game day inside Extreme? It, well, the Hawkeye fans is what makes it the coolest. It's a great arena. It's new and shiny. And uh, I love our floor. Our players love, you know, that Terrafax floor. It's really nice. But the Hawkeye fans are great. They're there. They're supporting us. They're blue collar. They know it's a work in progress and they show up and uh, they're going to sell out the place as we get better and better. And that's who we really play hard for. I believe your first home Big Ten match is against one of the newcomers in Washington. And that's the one that's been designated as a gold out. I know there's plenty of time before you get to that match, but that should be a pretty special night as well. For sure. Uh, and I believe that's our first road match for them in the Big Ten. Um, so, yeah, I think it's going to be special. I think the nation's really going to have a lot of eyes on, you know, our league in general, but the four new teams and, and how that all plays out. I'm interested to see as well. Yeah, it, it's interesting that this league has been so good for the last couple of years. There's certainly the SEC has had some great runs. Pac-12 has been mm -hmm. a really good league. But when you look at this league and you look at the teams at the top, I mean, you could make an argument that the top five or six teams in this league could easily, and many of them are preseason, right. inside the top ten. 
yeah, uh, you know, <laughs> you look at our whole league and you look at our Olympic team, we've got majority of them are from the Big Ten, but yeah, the league's incredible. There's three different tiers of it, you know, and everyone's fighting to work their way up, you know, through this league and it doesn't get easier with these four at it, but it's just a great opportunity and um, it's where the best come to play. What's the biggest focus for you and your staff, Jim, once you get in there, you get ready to work with the players and yeah. camp really gets to full speed because you only have some three and a half weeks before yeah. the Puerto Rico tournament starts? Yeah, we'll be learning on a daily basis what our players can and can't do and what we can do within our system and what we maybe hold back. But I love that part of getting everybody in the gym and us all working together collaboratively on how do we get to be our best team. Um, it's the best part of it. And then you go test yourself on game day and see where you got to go from there. That whole process in the gym, you know, a lot of people don't get to see that, but that's the best part is the hard work. And, and then how do we, again, make each other better through that process? You've probably answered all the questions in your career, lengthy career as a head volleyball coach. Uh, Ann and Michelle, we're about to hear from them yeah. in a minute. And for a lot of these players, kind of the first experience in this situation, do you give them any prep work or any advice as to how to handle these hard-hitting questions coming up from Elena and Holly? Well, I just said be spontaneous. That's the best thing. And, uh, and they're loaded with great answers. They're way more entertaining than I am. So, uh, yeah, they'll be fun. I love it. Elena's kind of gesturing to the players. Don't worry, they're not as hard hitting as Rick's making them out to be. I promise <laughs> we will be okay. Jim Barnes, Iowa head coach, really yes. appreciate your time. Yeah. Thanks for being with us. Thank Best you, of sir. luck yeah. to you and the Hawkeyes. Everybody needs a little bit of luck when you have the Big Ten schedule that you have to face. We talked about that gold out game for the Iowa Hawkeyes. It is on October the 4th. It is Washington's first road match inside the Big Ten. Uh, but no time to celebrate even if Iowa wins that match because two days later they're in Lincoln to face the preseason and one of the national favorites in Nebraska. Other great home matches for Iowa. You have Purdue, you have Oregon, and then the return trip for the Huskers at the end of November. Should be a lot of fun for Hawkeye Volleyball fans to watch, and they're certainly going to be watching for Anna and Michelle as you send it back to Elena and Holly. Thanks so much, Rick. Holly and I are back, this time joined by Anna Davis and Michelle Urquhart from Iowa Volleyball. Welcome. I promise we won't ask you super hard-hitting <laughs> questions. We'll try to have some fun with this. Speaking of fun, Big Ten Media Days. What has been your favorite part of Big Ten Media Days so far? I would say my favorite part so far has been all the tiny mic interviews because they're just very random questions. Coach talking about spontaneous. Those ones are very spontaneous questions and spontaneous answers. Yeah. I would back off of that, but I would also say just being able to do it with her. Um, we've been through a lot together, so coming to Big Ten Media Day to kind of close out my senior year with Anna has been something special. I'm looking forward to seeing some of the tiny mic stuff on social media. <laughs> that stuff's always so funny. Everyone, there's always a comment like, why is the mic so small? It's on purpose. <laughs> um, on to a little bit more hard hitting. Give us a bit of a preview for this season. We know you have a couple new transfers coming in, always some new faces in the gym. What is Iowa Volleyball going to look like this season? Yeah, I think that's one thing that's really exciting for us this year. We have a lot of new people. And so Iowa Volleyball as a team and as faces is going to look very different. But at the heart of it, we're going to be the same. We're going to be a team that's going to go out there, work hard, give our best every game. And, you know, we know we're not going to win how everyone else wins, and we're going to find our own way to go out there and work hard and give every team the best we can and win differently. Yeah, I think you're going to see a really gritty team who's not going to let a ball hit the floor without five people chasing after it. Um, I think, like Anna said, we have our own way of winning. We're not going to be the tallest or maybe the fastest, but we're not going to let anything hit the floor and we're going to play together. What do you both love about playing for your head coach? A lot of things. <laughs> I think number one that always comes to the top of the list is how much Jim loves his players and loves the sport of volleyball. I think those are two things that just by having one conversation with him will be crystal clear to people. And I think they kind of go hand in hand. Like he loves the sport of volleyball, which makes him a great student and teacher of the game as he continues through his career as a coach but then that bleeds into how he treats his athletes and his players and the staff around him. Like, he loves us as people as well as athletes and that impacts how he treats us, how he pushes us, and how we all work together in the gym. Yeah, he just has so much joy that he brings on and off the court. Um, a lot of dad jokes, to say the least. <laughs> um, but like Anna said, he cares about us as human beings and wants to know how we're doing outside of what we're doing on the court or injury or anything like that. He wants to know about our personal life, what we're doing outside of the court, um, anything interesting that happened throughout the day. So I think that's really special. Anna, okay. he, oh, 
Excuse me, he, Anna, he talked about you being the CEO and rebuilding your home. What has been some of the basic stuff that you guys have built this program on? Yeah, I think two of the most foundational things we build this program on, sounds easy when you say it, is love and trust. And I think I mentioned that before, the coach loves the sport and loves us, but that's something that we all have to embody too. And we think if we build those and start with those and have that not just with a few people, but with a whole team, when you bring 18 people together and they all are loving and trusting each other in the small moments or the silly moments, it's then easier to trust and love each other in those big moments. And then that builds to then grow those other big concepts and big things that you need in those moments that when it gets tough, when it gets loud, when it gets difficult, to then be able to come together instead of pull apart. Coach Barnes spoke very highly of both of you guys to Rick <laughs> just a couple of minutes ago. Anna, he called you one of the hardest workers in the gym. You've been at Iowa now for a couple seasons. First season, redshirted, and then now last season, earned a starting role. What are you kind of looking to do in your third season at Iowa? Yeah, I think it's been a journey for me here at Iowa and hearing compliment like that is, I'm just grateful, but um, I'm looking to continue and exceed upon that vision that I came here to Iowa with. You know, I came to Iowa three years ago with a vision and with a goal that coach had put in my head and that's for Iowa to become a successful program and I want to continue that this year and I want to do it in a way that we work hard, we work together and we're going to go out there and we're going to leave everything on the court every game. And that's my goal this season is that all 18 of us are giving everything we can and I can leave the gym knowing that I gave everything I got and I made my teammates better. Michelle, your coach talked about your volleyball IQ and you being one of the best servers in the game. What do you bring to your team? Um, I think I just bring a level of like calmness on the court. I may not be like the loudest cheer or the most vocal, but I bring, I feel like in my personal opinion, some stability in the back row or in the front row or when things are getting crazy, just like a calm voice to kind of just like get everybody's heads like back focus. I feel like that would be something that I would, that I pride myself on bringing to the team. And what's your favorite thing about being such a great server? Um, what should we call it? I actually, I think it's fun because you, that's where it all starts is with your serve. So I think if I can do my job, then I can make my teammates jobs so 10 times easier by getting them out of system and us getting an easier ball to then highlight everybody else on the team. We love hearing about you guys as players. We love watching you on the court, but we definitely want to spend some time getting to know you as people as well. So can you give us a bit of a glimpse inside the Iowa Volleyball Gym? What is your team culture like? What do you guys do outside of the gym together as well? Yeah, our gym is fun. It's very loud. I think <laughs> you, anytime you walk in, probably 16 to almost all 18 of us are gonna have a smile on our face at almost all times. Um, we're loud when we get together, it's a very loud group and even the quietest of us kind of get a lot of noise and get boisterous together. Um, probably, I don't know, like most teams, but we, one of our favorite things is to eat. And so that's one of our favorite things to do together <laughs> is go get meals, whether it's just to go get coffee together, get breakfast, get dinner. We are very constantly splitting meals or showing up to restaurants in Iowa City with 16, 14 of us and they're willing to accommodate for all of us, but that's one of our favorite things is just sit around a table together and talk and eat and enjoy each other's company. Yeah, I just retweet that. We are big eaters. <laughs> and so, and it's normally not planned either, which I think is kind of like what makes it even more special because we generally just want to spend time with each other instead of, hey, on this night it's mandatory and everybody has to be there. It's kind of like, after practice, hey, I'm craving this. Anybody want to come? And then more than half the team ends up coming half the time. So I think it's just like a family, and I think that's what we're just trying to keep building in our culture. Do you have any team mottos or team pillars that you guys talk about? Our pillars, love, trust, commitment, and sacrifice, all stands on a foundation of being all in. And then two, uh, two goals that we had is just giving 100% of what you have like that day, um, regardless if it's an A, B, or C game, just giving everything that you have, and then just being grateful for being able to be in the gym and to be able to touch a volleyball. I think that's two things that we as a team like collectively decided that that's what we wanna do this season. There's a couple new schools joining the conference this year. Are any of them you're most excited to play against? Any venues you're most excited to play in? Tell me a little bit about when you found out those teams were coming in, who do you look forward to playing against? 
I'll be honest, I was really excited when we first heard they were joining of the prospect of going to Washington and Oregon. Sadly, we will not be attending those schools this year, but I'm just excited to play them. They, you know, these teams are all really good at volleyball, and so they're going to bring a whole new level of competition to the Big Ten and going to bring a whole new challenge. I think volleyball is played slightly different between conferences, and you can kind of see in how just different teams play, and so I'm excited to see what they bring and what they bring from their experience in the Pac-12 into the Big Ten. And what do you know from the West Coast? What's that style difference? Oh, I don't know. I've watched. I, <laughs> I just feel like, like more speaking from like the Big Ten. I feel like the Big Ten is very big on like power hitters and specific outside power. Mm -hmm. And so I think like you can see that in other conferences and a lot of that's just a big volleyball thing. But I think that's just like a lot of it is a little different in the Big Ten than you can see in other conferences just with like the certain players and caliber you get. So I'm just intrigued to see what they bring in that regard. Not fully knowing what they have in general. <laughs> <laughs> Previewing this season a little bit, what can Hawkeye fans expect to see when they come to an Iowa volleyball match this year? I think just like a gritty team that's eager and excited to be out there. Um, I think they'll definitely see some upsets this year. I'm not afraid to say it. It's going to happen with the people that we have in the gym and the course we're bringing. I definitely think there's going to be upsets and there's just going to be a lot of fun volleyball played with a lot of joy. Yeah, so. I retweet everything she says. You know, our goal is to go out there every day and give the best we can, and the results will come with the hard work that's put in. Absolutely. We can't wait to watch you guys this season. So excited. I just want first serve to happen right now. But thank you <laughs> for joining <laughs> us. I hope you've had so much fun at Big Ten Media Day. Thank you, Anna and Michelle. Thank you thank for you. having us. <laughs>